This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. The creator, he created the world <clears throat> to have an existence out of nowhere. Before the creation, there was nothing here. There was no place, there was no time, there was no weight, there was no physicality, there were no colors, no definitions, no sizes. It was an empty space. And when a person he wants to create something, he needs to learn from the Creator, that he is the one that creates. And the Creator, he moved himself to the sides to bring that possibility to have an empty space that you will create from the center of that emptiness. So, us, as as people that wants to create, first step is to learn how to move ourselves to the side a little bit, to let other people have an existence and to have a place of their own for themselves to, to live in that space. And also we need to understand that the moments of emptiness that we feel those are the real moments of preparation to creation. In many hours we can find ourselves lost and confused and can't find ourselves and don't know what to do with our lives and, and doubting everything that we, we knew before and like rethinking about everything and what's the purpose and what's the use of all of those things and because you feel emptiness. Oh, for years I was doing this and that and I had a passion, passion for learning, passion for davening, passion for Shabbat, passion for Kashrut, passion for mitzvot. And suddenly after a while, many people are struggling with this situation. Can't find it. Can't, it it's like the spark disappeared. And they feel emptiness. But that emptiness is only the preparation of the new creation that you should create inside of that emptiness. Because, for an example, if a person in the beginning of his time, when in, the, in the beginning of his shuva, when he started to, to learn, so he was so ambitious and so thirsty to knowledge and and he went and every book was shining and the letters were flying for him and the, like the verses, everything was, was in, uh, like amazing combinations and, and he felt so spiritual and inspired and he just like, the, the, he felt like hunger that will never be satisfied. Want more books and wanted to, to finish the Shas and to learn all the books and all the Gemara and when I'm going to start learning Zohar and Kabbalah and, and he wants to know all the Shulchan Aruch and to know every Psaq and every question and solve all the doubts and all, all, the, all, the, all the, the, the tiniest points, dots, he wanted to know all them all. And, and then a person starts like dealing with other things in life, family, children, business and he's going off from learning and when he goes with his thoughts, with his fears again to try to learn so his mind is distracted so not always he finds the power to to find the same understanding in the book and the same inspiration because his mind is off because his mind is like distracted, he's afraid, he's worried, he's got some things so the learning is not feeding him, not nurturing him like it used to before it doesn't feed him like it used to. So then a person can start questioning. Maybe it's not the right way. Maybe then I was just excited. Maybe it's not the truth. But no. This emptiness that you feel right now when you're sitting in front of that book will just going to help you to read in a certain book or to focus your mind in certain learning that will be much deeper than all of that general learning that you were learning before.
before you were opening 10 books a day, 20 books a day, and you were so happy and excited, but you were not focusing on, on who that you were. Your heart, your mind was so spread, so open, so wide, that you couldn't focus and couldn't really understand the real message of Hashem, because you heard uh, um, like uh, an or orchestra, you heard 20 m instruments playing in the same time, so you couldn't focus. But now Hashem is talking directly to you, and He's telling you exactly what is needed for you. In the beginning you heard, okay, creation, Bereshit, Genesis, okay, you read the Mepharshim, Rashi on this parashat of the, of the parasha of this week, amazing, and then you learned Halakha, so before of Purim you learn on Purim, before of Pesach you learn on Pesach. It all becomes to be a huge salad, it becomes to be a mess. It's not that it's wrong, it's great, but it's very general. Now Hashem is talking to you and telling you, listen, you need iron. You need vitamin C, you need light, you need vitamin D, vitamin E, you need fibers, you need to eat green vegetables. Hashem is talking to you. Hashem is telling you, listen to me, to one thing specific that is important for you. When the mind of a person is spread all over the place and he's thinking what will be with his family, what will be with his business, what will, he cannot do it, he cannot make it all. A person must focus. If you are a mechanic and you want to fix that engine, you, 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 you start looking at all the parts and everything. You cannot see it from distance. You must bend your back a little bit and to go into that part itself, the motor, and to open the covering of it and to deal, now you need to open that screw so you need to work on that screw even and you cannot think about the rest of the problems of the car on the tires and on the oils and on the steering wheel you cannot it, it's you're not going to make it you need now to open that screw that's what you need to do so work on it focus on it and it will bring you in the next step to open the motor cover and then to start working on that problem and when you're going to complete it or at least going to achieve one step into understanding the whole picture you will be able to continue and to accomplish the perfect thing that you you desire to fix that car to fix that motor but when you are all over the place you cannot do it so as a mechanic if Hashem wants to give you that car he wants to offer the mechanic to take that job, so it's exciting. You bring a car to the mechanic and you tell him, listen, that car needs so much work, so you made him excited. I need to change the tires, I have problems with the oil, I need to, to change this and that, and I hear noises from the motor and this and that. that he's excited. He's excited. Okay, I'll take the car. Why is he excited? Because he, he sees that there is much to do. That's his job. He will be paid. He will be rewarded on it. Okay, he's happy. He's desiring to deal with that car. But now, when really he took it already and it's in his garage, now he needs to work on it. So now it's time to take care of every particle on his own. So in the beginning of our tshuva, Hashem is showing to you a picture. Hashem opened the sea and people were walking in the dry land and also we've been given rules and obligations of my for Mount Sinai and you know it came in prophecy and thunders and smoke and, and flames of fire and Moses he was in such level and you know there were ten sefirot in the, in, the, in the Kabbalah and Hashem was using names okay great fantastic wide picture of battles, of wars, of secrets, of hidden Torah, of our history, of our ancestors, of, of, of heroic righteous people, amazing things, of rules, of obligations that are coming to our generation. That's the wide picture. Exciting. I want it. Great. But now you need to eat green vegetables. <laughs> now you need fibers. For you, you need now to eat fibers. You need now to know how to respect your wife, how to work on your temper, on your anger, 
how to work on your ability, on your confidence in Hashem, on your ability to support your family, to wake up in the mornings, to do your job, to keep yourself calm and relaxed and happy. And that's your life mission for today. And that's why everything becomes so gray. Not because that it's gray, because Hashem is putting certain things in front of your eyes, so He's making the rest blur. He makes the rest cloudy, that you won't lose your focus from dealing with the purpose, with the center of your life purpose. And it's only the mercy and the kindness of the Creator to bring the person to such amazing place, that in that place you will be able to focus on what that is so needed and required for him in his life. So the person, instead of losing his happiness because of all of that emptiness that he feels around him, he should just focus on the good points, on the things that Hashem for sure is showing to him that that is your life purpose and to do his job. Like that I'm saying many times that a good soldier is a soldier that is willing to do his job and to complete his mission, no matter what his mission is. If his commander is going to send him to, to paint that fence or to clean that toilet, that's your job. Go do that. A good soldier is not a, a, a high level with his skills and he's doing fantastic missions in the enemy's territory only at night, undercover. No, it's not, that doesn't have to be special forces to be a good soldier. To be a good soldier is to, to obey. It's to be respectable, it's to be polite, it's to be nice, it's to be honorable, it's to love, it's to care, it's to follow the orders of your commander. Now sometimes it's time of war, it's time of war, and all the warriors, all the fighters are running to the fields with their weapon, and your commander is telling you, listen, I need you to go and bring two buckets of water. You want to kill yourself. You feel like, what? All of my friends are fighting, are dying, are suffering, are, are, are succeeding, conquered the, 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 the enemy. What? Okay, I need to go back and bring buckets of water? It's such a shame. I'm such a disgrace. No, you're not a disgrace. You don't know what's the mission. Your commander, he knows the complete picture and he's sending you now to bring water. Because water are needed in the battlefield for some reason. If you will be a loyal soldier, you will come back with the water in the right moment and he will wash the wounds of the wounded soldiers with your water. And he's going to revive the dead with those water. And he will make wonders with those water because he knows exactly why he needed you. He knew that he can count on you. And sometimes for you it looks so great. What? I need to go to my work, to my job every day. Every day I need to do the same thing, my same routine. That's my gray life. Every day with the same family, every day with the same business, every day with the same uh, um, obligations, every day in the same hours, every day canceling so many hours of Torah, every day losing so many... T you don't see the whole picture. There is such a fantastic plan and you're part of it and you can fit to your spot and to make all your environment bloom and grow and succeed only if you will be loyal to the mission, only if you're going to bring those buckets as fast as possible in the right time. If your mind won't be distracted on your way, oh, you know, I'm not happy, all of my friends, everyone are fighting now, everyone are doing this, everyone are learning, everyone are praying, and only me, I cannot do this, I cannot do that. You're losing your mission. You're losing your connection with your commander, with the king of all kings. And the king, he knows. He knows exactly what is good for you. He knows the purpose of your life and why you need to spend so many hours in your house and why you need to spend so many hours in your business and why you need to spend so many hours stuck in traffic and in the grocery store and going back to school and in and out and taking your children and driving them. He knows. He knows because He is the Creator. And when you 
want to create something, you need to understand that a real creation is coming from emptiness. Like Rav Dro, for an example. Rav Dro is a very good example. You can learn from him. Why? Because every time that he's coming to teach, like he said yesterday in his class, he doesn't know what he's going to speak about. And Hashem is making sure to empty Rav Dro completely before of his class from every thought, from every inspiring thought that he had before, from every godly observation on life, from every inspiring faith, from every holy thought that can be in the peak of the world that he might thought from last class till today. And he's bringing him totally empty to the class. And then Avdrov is standing and breathing and trying to understand what Hashem wants from him. And then he's opening his mouth and he's creating. What is he creating? What did Hashem want? He doesn't deliver himself. He delivers the will of Hashem. And then what happened? Twenty people are sitting in the class. Another one thousand or two or three or seven thousand people are watching him online. And everyone are being answered. Everyone are receiving exactly what they need to hear. So if Rav Dror would try to think how to give a speech that will be perfect to 7,000 people, he would never be able to do something like that. Because Rav Dror is not God. Rav Dror is not Hashem. Rav Dror can only nullify himself to the Creator. He can only let the Creator express His wisdom through him, through Rav Dror. So Rav Dror needs to nullify himself. How you nullify yourself? You're canceling yourself. So when you know how to do the right Itbodadut and to be completely humble, so great, you can humble yourself to become zero. Like that Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu is saying, Venachnuma, what are we? We're nothing. We know that we're zero. Like that all of our ancestors were so humble, like Moses, like Aaron, like Abraham, like Jacob, like Yitzhak. Isaac, all righteous people were totally humble, totally humble. King David, he knew that he, someone was arguing, uh, screaming at him. King David is asking him, why are you screaming at a dead dog? I'm a dead dog. He was holding himself as a dead dog. How can you, why, why are you wasting your time? You're such an honorable person, such a nice person, such an intelligent person. Like, qualified rabbi, a learner, and you're wasting your time screaming at me, cursing me. I'm a dead dog. I'm a piece of junk. Why are you, why are you cursing me? I'm a piece of mud, piece of earth, piece of dust. Why are you? What are we? Moshe Rabbeinu is saying. What are we? We know that we're nothing. So, if a person knows how to humble himself and to make himself empty and zero, so then the Divine Spirit of Hashem can hover on him always. But when the person is still arrogant and he's still proud and he's still selfish and he's holding himself to be someone and yes, I am and I'm doing it and I'm gonna... He's got plans <laughs> for the future. So Shavit Barach is helping him to understand that only Hashem is the Creator and that you can create only when you move yourself to the sides. Only when you let Hashem express Himself through you. So, it's not a cruel thing. It's a, it's a great, magnificent thing. Because the Creator will use you in a way that will make you satisfy and happy. Because all of that light that will pass out to the world through you will become to be your light. When you will accept that it's all Hashem, so then it will be all you. But when you're going to think that it's you, Hashem will show you that you're empty. When you think that you have a certain existence and that you're important and that you're someone, a big shot, so Hashem Barach is shutting off all the lights on the person, that the person will understand that he's far from the truth that really there is no one else except of the Creator. 
and that we are nothing. So it's a favor that the Creator is doing with us while humbling us. That thing that we hate so much, to be humbled. But the truth is that it's only a favor. It's a gift of grace of the Creator to His beloved ones to bring them to the truth. To open their eyes to experience reality that there is no one except of the Creator. No one else except of the Creator. No one. No one. There is no one except of Him. There is only one that it's Him. And no one else except of Him. No one. So when you're humble enough and you understand it, so the Spirit of the Creator can hover upon you forever. And you're always happy. And the light of Hashem is healing you and providing you and supplying you and stabilizing you and supporting you. And pearls of wisdom are coming out from your mouth and diamonds are getting into your soul and sparks you find everywhere and you see things and the creation is alive for you. But when you don't know how to do it on your own, so the Creator, He must humble the person completely to flat, make him flat, zero and below. And then suddenly you can create. And what you can create? Goodness, good things. That's the real light of your soul. When you are revealing the good talents that the Creator treasured inside of you, that He gave you, like your sensitivity, how much that you care about people, how much that you want to help other people, how much that you love, how much that you want to inspire. When you do those amazing things that you want to listen, that you want to be there for him, for her, that you want to give a hand, that you want to play, that you want to learn, that you want to develop, all of the good things that are healing and building, so then the light of Hashem Barach is being expressed by you. But when the person is still suffering from his selfishness and his arrogant, is there a word like that, selfishness? Yes, I'm making up like a new language, a modern English. It works. So, when you're still selfish, in that moment, You're denying the truth. You're denying the real existence of the Creator by think that, thinking that you're something. You think, I'm going to build, I'm going to do, now I'm going to make, now I'm going to change, I'm going to show, I'm going to tell. All of those things are, are based on the power of your imagination that you think that you have power of your own. But the real truth is that He, the Almighty, He is the one that holds all the powers, and He is the one that controls all the powers, and He is that one that is able to supply and to give and to heal and to provide and to give you everything that you need. So when you are nullifying yourself to Him, only then really the power and the greatness of His beauty and His wisdom can flow through you and can go out to the world through you and purify the world and affect in a positive way. So when a person is looking for the purpose of his life, for the real reason for his life, to empty himself and to humble himself is not such a bad thing. The opposite, it's a great thing. Why is it a great thing? Because it's really going to bring out from you the real potential that is still locked and hidden inside of you. When you will try to show the world who that you are and what you're able to do, you're not going to make it. It's not going to work for you. But when you will understand that there is a Creator to the creation and that He wants to bring down bounty, spiritual bounty and wisdom and whatever, all of those amazing colors that He treasured inside of you, out to the world through you, you will understand that He really wants to reveal His greatness and also through you. He doesn't mind. He wants to move all of His Shefa, all of His wisdom, all of His bounty through you. He will be happy. He will be proud of you that you will succeed to carry His news, His message out to the world. He wants it. But you must humble yourself for that and to remember Him always, 
And when you're going to remember Him always and going to let Him express Himself through you, so then you will enjoy that bounty that is coming through you out to the world. And you won't be upset. You won't be sad. Because the glory and the honor and the respect and the satisfaction that you will feel by keeping your job right, doing your mission, focusing in the real purpose of your life, it's a satisfaction that is beyond this world. It's a spiritual satisfaction. And this is why it's written on the Shlom Bayit topic, on that issue, that when people... Shlom Bayit is, is, I think, it's the highest secret of, of creation, peace in the house, relationship between a man to a woman in, 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 in the family. I think that the, the, the perfection of it represents the perfection of, of the universe, of the Creator and His creation and the world. And when the couple are happy, so the Shekhinah, the spirit of the Creator, is hovering between them and there is peace between them. So when there is peace between the couple, only when one of them is not pushing the other, is not forcing the other, he's just he, he's, he's accepting his friend, and he loves his friend, he appreciates his friend, he respects him, he lets him be, he gives him place, and he is full of gratitude that he's got that ability to be by his side, and to share his life with him, and on and on and on. And he's full of that gratitude and appreciation to his soulmate, and from that moment and on, the spirit of the Creator is hovering between them and canceling the physicality and the limitations of their bodies. And they become to be one. Like the verse is saying, That the purpose of the creation of the couple is that the person will leave the house of his parents and will attach himself to his wife in such a fantastic way that they will become one, united. But how can two bodies be united? You cannot make two bodies that are separated by the nature of their creation. They both have different hearts, they both have different brain, different vein system. It, it separate skin is separating between those two flesh, two, two bodies. How can you connect them? Only spiritually, only emotionally. Only emotionally, when they love each other, so love and peace and truth, that's the glue that is com combining, that is connecting them to become one. Because they feel united. They want to support each other. They want to spend more time together. They love each other. They care about each other. They're thinking about each other even when they're separated. When she's home and he's working. When she's working and he's home. And they're thinking and they're loving and they're caring. And they're planning what they're going to say to each other. And there is love and passion of holy fire between that couple. And that fire is the fire of the Creator. This is the spirit of the Creator that is hovering between those two people and makes them one. Means that it breaks the physicality of their bodies and they become one spiritual unit. And that's the secret of Adam and Eve. That it's written on Adam and Eve in the beginning of their creation that they were one person that was in one piece. But then, the first man, Adam, he was looking to the sides, he started looking with his eyes, and he saw the world, that the world were built in a way, been created in a way, that the rest of the species, except of him, except of the humans, all of the rest were separated to two. The zebras, there were, there were a male and a female. The giraffes, they were separated. Male and a female. Elephants, like we know today, male and female. Except of him. Only him and his wife were one piece. 
So then he was said, why he was said? Because he was looking at the external world. He was not focusing in the purpose of his creation to be one with his wife. And he wanted to be like everyone else. He saw that the outside world is functioning nice. Everyone are running, jumping, eating fruits, grass. Everyone was, it was free grass in those days. Everyone were happy, celebrating in heaven. So he was not happy. So he was crying to Hashem. And he told him, why should I be different? So the Creator made him to fall asleep and took out one of his ribs means that he cut him to two and he separated his wife from him and they became two so now the mission is to come back to the real will of the creator for the ancient days for the ancient purpose of our creation and it's to become one with your soulmate that those two souls, when they're coming and standing under the chuppah and they're getting married, those are two souls that in their root in heaven, they are one. You're one soul that been separated to two physical bodies. Now, this is why, and that's, uh, that is also an advice that I'm giving many times to friends of mine that are asking, how I'm going to know who my shidduch is, how I'm going to find my wife, how I'm going to know who my wife is, or a woman is asking, how I'm going to know who my husband is. If I'm going to tell her, your husband, he's got black hair and brown eyes, how she, how she going to meet him? Millions of people are answering to that uh, description. He's six feet tall. He's got like he's got a beard, he's wearing a, a dark suit. How, how is she gonna? Okay, I'm left with only 900,000. <laughs> how am I gonna choose? You don't know. He's handsome. Okay, 300,000. Okay, he, he smells good. Okay, seven. <laughs> left with seven. How is she gonna choose from those poor seven ones? She doesn't know. She cannot know. By the body, you can never tell who your soulmate is, only by her soul, only by his soul. How? How are you going to know? You cannot see their soul. You don't have those eyes of the righteous people that can define that soul from that branch in that root. You don't know. How will you know? You can know your soul. And she, your wife, your future wife, she's got the same soul. Because you and her in the roots of your creation, you're one. So when you're going to know yourself, you're going to look at your wife and you're going to find yourself over them. You're going to recognize, oh, here I found myself. It's me. It's me. Liv is inside of hell. That's my wife. She's my soul. And the opposite is exactly the same. That's why you fit. Because you're the same one. You're not opposites, like the rabbis are usually saying. You're not opposites. When you're going to learn who you really are, you're going to find that your wife, she's holding your soul. And your wife, she's going to find her soul inside of you. That's why she loves you, because she feels that you, you are who that she is. That you and her, you're a match. And that's the truth. So when you're connecting yourself physically, it's dead. It's a dead relationship. It can never work because the bodies can never be united. It's not like even by the relationship between the couple, the intimate relationship, it, it, it doesn't stay. After a few minutes, it's finished. That's it. And then you're gone. And, and then what? You feel separated and you feel distance and you feel that you need to think and you and like many many thoughts of separation because you have really been torn and separated from each other so that's not the answer the answer is the love is the appreciation is the gratitude it's to work on the attributes it's to become one in spirit with your soulmate 
So now, when the person is working on those attributes and he's focusing in the light of his own soul and he's working on his spirit to know it and to find it and to express it and to be who that he is so by doing that he is breaking the nature of his physicality and he becomes one spiritually with other people with his soulmate, with his wife, with his children with everyone that are surrounding him he becomes one with them, with them by loving, by caring, by appreciating. And that's what that I'm also trying to do all of my days. And that's why people feel for my classes when I'm teaching that I'm sitting with them in their living rooms right now. Like, how in the world he reads my thoughts? I'm not reading your thoughts, I'm just with you. I'm not reading your thoughts from my place. I'm now in Monsi. No, I'm, I'm not physically here and reading physically your mind through that iPhone. No. I'm just with you in the dimension of the soul. Spiritually, I'm sitting with you now in your living room, watching, your, watching you, watching me on Facebook Live. That's what that I'm doing spiritually I care about you I want to spend my time with you I want to be with you I care about you I love you I'm thinking about you so I'm with you if you can see it and if you cannot if I can see it and if I can't Hashem is doing it for us because we in the root of our souls are one all of us we're one unit we're united we are all united. We're all the soul of Adam and Eve in our roots, in the roots of our soul. We are the soul of Adam and Eve that is also not separated to man and woman. Also not separated to male and female. Also one in that root. And that's the secret of my name as well. Just sharing. That my name is Drom Moshe Kasuto, and it's the initials of the word Kedem. Kedem is the ancient days. It's the days of before. That's who that I am. That's why I am allowed from heaven to, to deliver this, this information to our generation. Because from heaven, that's who that I am. I'm coming from that ancient place of before time, of before creation. That's why I can explain it so well. Because it's me, and you are who that you are, and you can explain yourself to the world. And the world needs to hear who that you are. Because you're also bringing a certain completion to the world that no one else has an access to it, except of you. In the root of your creation, you're coming from a divine place. You have a divine mission. Something unique that only runs in your mind, in your feelings, in your, in your dreams. That's who that you are. And everyone are like that. Everyone are unique and special. And must connect themselves to the spiritual root of their being and to be who that they are. Now, back to Shlom Bayit. When you work on your Shlom Bayit, you can accomplish such, such perfection between you that you can cancel nature. Because nature is physicality. And when you're going to come to that place that the peace in your house will be perfect, you will be able, you will be able to cancel physicality completely. You and your soul, soulmate will become one that nature won't have control on you anymore. And then you will be able to spread that light to four corners of the universe, to the wide world. Because when you have something, now, I have this small sitter, this booklet, it's mine, I can give it to you. If it's still not in my hand, it's on the way, it's still traveling, so I cannot give it to you. Even if my name is written on it, and it belongs to me, and I paid for it, if it's still not in my hand, I cannot deliver it to you. But when it's mine, when it became mine, 
I can give it to you in a second. Here, take it. It's yours. Why? Because it was mine. So also spiritually, when you receive a certain wisdom, and it's yours, you bought it, and it's in your hand, you can give it to others. That's what that Moses said to Am Yisrael, to his people. He told them that Hashem is expecting them all to have complete faith. And he said, what's the problem of yours? You have me. Look at me. Learn from me. So it's a very, it was a b very big question. Moshe, how can you tell us that we should have complete faith and that we should learn it from you if you're so righteous and you're so divine and high and we're so far from you and we're so low, we're not in your spiritual level. What's the connection? The fact that you said that I have, that you have it, is just make it even more far away from us and impossible for us to achieve. How come you say that it's easy? So from here we can learn the real intention of Moshe to tell his people you had me that yes, the truth is that I worked very hard to achieve my level, but after that I bought it already, and now it's mine, I can do with it whatever I want. I can just hand it to you because it's mine. So people just need to, to ask from, from Moses to receive from him. They cannot wait that Moses will come and deliver to their houses, going to knock on their doors, going to call them. They cannot wait for it. You need to... The one that wants the, the rabbi, he needs to come to the rabbi. You want to buy bread, you need to go to the grocery store, you need to go to the bakery. You cannot... No, oh, why I don't have bread? Because you have not bought it yet. You need to go and buy it. Go buy bread if that's what you want. So. If you want the wisdom, so you should go to the one that owns it and ask him to give you, and he will. A wise person is a person that loves to teach, is a person that wants to teach, is a person that remembers that all of his wisdom been given to him by the king of all kings as a free gift of generosity out of a result of the loving kindness the unconditional love of the Creator to His creations. And may Hashem bless you all. Thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.